Today we are introducing a distinctive Wudang martial arts spear form, Wudang Longmen Shi San Tiang, or Wudang Longmen 13 Spear. Hello and welcome to this episode of Wudang Shen Yun. Wudang martial arts have a long history. If one looks at the Gongfu methods of different traditions, one can see that they incorporate principles such as four ounces can conquer a thousand pounds, use stillness to control movements, and overcome hardness with softness. The stabbing spear is fast as lightning. The blocking spear can shake a mountain. The spear can raise a thousand pounds. The chopping spear resembles heavens collapsing. It is said that this form represents the essence of all Wudang spear forms. The Wudang spear is one type of weapon. In the past, weapons were rarely used inside the Taoist gate. Swords were an exception because they could protect one's life and more importantly, were used during ceremonies. When using martial force, Wu Li, there is an inherent intention to kill, and it is for this reason that Taoism opposes the use of it. Instead, it advocates principles such as naturalness, peace, harmony, benevolence, and compassion. These qualities are lost when a practitioner applies martial force. Knife, spear, sword, and staff are examples of Chinese martial arts weapons. Spears are categorized as stabbing weapons. They are long and sharp and possess immense destructive power. Other weapons can hardly combat against a spear, and this is why it is called Bai Bing Zhuo Wan, or the King of a Hundred Weapons. Compared to other martial arts weapon styles, spear forms and their principles are relatively difficult to learn and understand. A common saying goes, it takes a year to study the fist, a month to study the staff, and a long time to study the spear. To this date, this form has been secretly transmitted within the Taoist gate in Wudang. In total, there are 13 different styles of the Wudang spear. To name a few, Wu Ya Pu Chu, the crow flaps its wings. Qing Ting Dian Shui, the dragonfly touches the surface of water lightly. Wu Long Bai Wei, the black dragon sways its tail. Mainly applied are the Tai Chi Chuan and Bagua methods. The stepping methods resemble those found in Bagua, whilst the waist methods are similar to those in Tai Chi Chuan. Power emissions stem from Pigua and Xingyi. When practicing the Wudang spear, spear and body unify as one. Some of the Wudang spear's methods are blocking, stabbing, chopping, and raising. Stabbing must be even and accurate, fast and swift. The power from the tip of the spear, combined with one's intention, moves straight in and straight out, emitting the spear like a hidden dragon rising out of water, retrieving the spear like a fierce tiger returning to the cave. These are pictorial descriptions of how agile, powerful, and unpredictable the movements are. The opponents are therefore taken by surprise. When defending with a spear, use blocking and winding movements. Circular movements should not be too big, otherwise the opponent's weapons will find a weak point to enter. Within the Taoist gate of Wudang, the spear is mainly used for practicing internal power. Every movement is useful and highly practical. All moves incorporate power emissions and twisting and have practical use in sparring. A spear is used in two ways. The sharp tip can be used to stab a single point, and the shaft can be used to sweep horizontally across a wide area. Furthermore, the practitioner aims to emit internal power like a collapsing mountain. This spear form is highly suitable to practice Gong Fu and to train martial arts. Practicing the spear requires quick, firm and steady stepping. Walking and turning have to be light and agile, round and smooth. When emitting power, Power, the body should be as firm and steady as a mountain. The walking methods mainly focus on having deeply rooted steps. One must be able to turn, jump and avoid as fast as lightning. The feet step around circles within the image of a bagua. The Wudang spear requires body and hands to be winding and rotating. Requirements for practicing the spear are flexibility, agility, and the ability to change continuously. Power must be applied appropriately. Essentially, one's waist, legs, arms, and wrists have to unify with the spear and act as one body. Power must pass through the tip of the spear. The movements Do, Tzu, Gai, and Dao Ba, shake, stab, cover, and change hands, all embody their own distinguishing features. When performing Dou Chang, shake the spear, the front hand and the back hand grab in a different way. The front hand's specific holding methods serve to prevent attacking knives, sticks or spears from injuring one's hand. By observing a practitioner's power emissions, it is possible to tell how much gong or skill and power they possess. Level of gong is also revealed in the accuracy, direction, power and speed of their stabbing movements. Chinese ash wood is used to make the spears used to practice the Wudang spear forms. Its density is much higher than that of regular wood and it is both pliable and strong. When the method is applied correctly, one can repeatedly shake that material back and forth according to the rhythm of the form. Central to each movement made with the Wudang spear is the exchange between yin and yang. It is a combination of rounded and arched postures, twisting movements and the combination of activity and stillness. 
In its softness, it contains hardness. <laughs>